Hi, I'm Christian. Have you ever been in a tough or difficult situation where someone helped you out in a way that you didn't expect? I can remember a time my friend Kevin and I were on the way to a ski hill when our car slid into the ditch. Many cars passing by stopped to check if we were okay, and because of that, we were able to get the help that we needed. In today's God story, we're going to see how we can love our neighbor as ourselves. Watch this. Imagine flipping that and doing that for someone else. I, can you hear it? You can hear it, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Quincy. A few years ago, there was a crazy ice storm. We lost power and everything was just encapsulated in ice. I remember getting up that morning and there was no power and we were in a brand new neighborhood. We had just moved. And I saw a couple neighbors that I hadn't really met before at the, the bottom of my driveway talking. Well, I joined them and was just amazed at how beautiful outside was. Well, we got to talking and it was amazing. Uh, one of my neighbors invited, uh, invited me over for a breakfast. We had no power, so we weren't sure how long our food was going to keep. So sausage, bacon, eggs, all of the good stuff. And from us, the next door neighbor was invited, the neighbor uh, next to him was invited, the neighbor next to them was invited. And before we knew it, we had a kitchen packed full of everybody on our street, sharing meals, sharing stories, and enjoying our time together. It was amazing, a great opportunity for us to get to know one another. This leads to our big idea, love your neighbor as yourself. You've probably heard this idea before, but, but what does it mean? Here's the first thing. In order for me to love my neighbor well, I also need to know how to love myself well. But do we really know how to love ourselves well? When we remember our identity as children of God, it helps move ourselves to our true identity of who we really are and how to love ourselves. So far in our series in the book of Romans, we've learned that Paul, the apostle, is writing a letter to the Christians that were in Rome. We've learned that the Holy Spirit is is active in all believers and that nothing can separate us from God's love. That is key. We've learned that the Holy Spirit is active in all of our lives, that nothing can separate us from God's love, that Jesus wants to transform the way that we think and the way that we live, and that he wants to help us to love others even when it's really hard. So what does this kind of love look like? Let's see what the Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans. Chapter 13. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. Just think about that. There's no way that you can pay back someone for the love that they've given you. So think about that. The best way to fulfill God's law is just to love, love, love. Think about this. Who's the last person to clean up your puke? Or, or who's the, the person that makes sure that you have enough food to eat every day? Or, or the person that's helped you uh, walk through online school? That's a lot of love. Then Paul says there's some commandments to think about. Don't murder, don't lie, don't want what your neighbor has, be being envious or jealous. In truth, all of these commandments that Paul writes can be summed up in one big idea. Love your neighbor as yourself. It sounds easy, but it's so easy to love ourselves first. And then whatever our neighbors need or want, those needs tend to come way down the line. But if we really love our neighbors the way we love ourselves, we would take the time to find out what they need and care for them and love them in a way that they need. Let's imagine we actually put this into practice. What would it be like? Think about the things that you enjoy or appreciate. Like, like if someone were to show up on your front porch with a basket of goodies or, or send you a text message to tell you how awesome you are. Imagine if we flipped that and did that for somebody else. What kind of joy would that bring? What kind of happiness would somebody experience if they knew that they were loved by you and you'd love them in the way that you wanted to be loved? What an amazing opportunity that would be. Well, that's all for now. It's been so nice hanging out with you. My name's Quincy and we'll see you next time. So we heard that if we really love our neighbors well, we'll think of them more and notice their needs and be kind to them. And that's exactly what Lola and Morris did. Let's watch their story. I'm Lola and I like hockey, baking, volleyball, and hanging out with my friends. My name is Morris and I like to play hockey, soccer. I like to scooter with my friends and go to the skate park and play frisbee golf. 
As a family, we like to play frisbee golf down at the beach. We like doing puzzles, board games in the evenings. And then we also like watching movies and series on TV together. Usually my mom mostly makes the dinners, but sometimes we make dinners together, like we did pita pizzas sometimes. The pandemic started and lots of people, they didn't have their jobs because they couldn't like work in with other people. And so we decided to come up with a pantry. The pantry, so you build it and then you put it in your yard. People can bring food and take it if they need it. Me and my dad like got like screws and wood and built like the actual structure and then I painted the pantry. And my mom designed it. She put like the letters in and then she stocks it up once in a while when it's empty and stuff. The message on the pantry says, take what you need and add what you can. Because some people don't have a lot of food and like they need it, so they can come to the pantry and take anything they need for to help them with what they're going through. The food that's in there will be available to anyone who needs it. Sometimes I see people like come and drive up and put food in the pantry, or like I see people come with their kids and like the kids put the food in and yeah. One person, well, we didn't see them, but they came by and they wrote inside the pantry, thank you so much, because they were like really grateful for like the food that other people can take and like to help them with what they're going through. Yeah. We want to love our neighbors like Jesus did. And so um, we saw that another person left a note in our mailbox and said, if we could give them tips on how to build a pantry um, for their church to help others like we did. My mom emailed them and they responded and I think the pastor said, it's a practical way to love others. If you don't have the materials or you don't want to like build a whole pantry, then you can also just put like food on your curb or like the, your property and people can come by, take some, and just so then you can help others, but like you don't have to build like a whole box to like keep it in. So you can just put it on your curb and have others come and take it if they need it. Or you could help your neighbors by like bringing their trash bin or bringing it out or shoveling their driveway if there's snow or, or something. Yeah, I think we'll continue it because lots of people like to come by and add stuff, but also like take it. And that's like the most important part. And like just seeing people come by is like really nice because like we know that they need it. So to continue it would be really helpful for them. We wanted to be more like Jesus and help others like he helped lots of people um, as we read in the Bible. So we want to be more like him and help others in our street and yeah. How amazing is it that what Lola and Morris and their family started soon became something that the whole neighborhood would support. Soon enough, families from all around were bringing food to fill the pantry. I find this really inspiring, and I hope you do too. Let's break into our small groups and see how this looks in our own lives. <laughs>